All right guys, welcome back to a new video on the 1995 Honda 300EX. As you guys know, last video I picked this one up with a 250X package deal for I think it was 1350, if I remember correctly. We got this one back home, started working on it, and uh, we found out that it had low compression. The low compression was due to the intake valves being tight. We loosened the intake valves and this thing fired right up, but it was smoking a ton and still had slightly low compression. So we ended up tearing it apart. The crank on it is still good. The rod bearing is still good on this. So we don't have to do anything with the bottom end so far. But check out the piston. This piston was just cooked. You can see all the blow by from the rings. The rings were stuck uh, to the piston. So it was getting lower compression and then allowing oil to flow by. You can see how much oil got on the piston. Tons and tons of blow by. So that's why it was smoking so much. Um, the cylinder wasn't too scratched. There's a part right here that needs to be honed. But really it's not too bad. Definitely reusable. Um, and then we'll probably replace the valve seals as well. But then um, we've got this piston we could potentially use. And I also got a brand new niche piston. Uh, this thing was only like 30 bucks online compared to the 140 for a Weisco. So I went with this one because I've used these before and they seem to hold up pretty well. So this one comes with piston rings. Pin and then the little clips. So. Supposedly this is the same size as this one, so we will see. We're going to measure that, measure the ring gap, all that fun stuff, but let's get going on this thing. We're going to try to finish this quad up today and then take it for the first ride and uh, see how she does. So stay tuned. It should be a fun video. I've never ridden a 300EX before, so it should be pretty fun. All right, let's uh, get this out of the wrapping here and we'll measure this with the calipers. See if it's the correct size. It looks like the same thing from the top, from the bottom, it looks the same. Looks exactly the same from the bottom. From the sides, looks the same. Let's measure it and see if it's the correct. Let's see what this one is. Standard piston size is 74 millimeters. So this one is slightly smaller than that, 73.64. I'd like it to be a little bigger than that. Let's see, yeah, this one is a little bit bigger. Seventy three point nine two three. So this one's a little bit bigger, which is good. So that's the exact same size. It's just not as worn as the other one. So let's quick measure the ring gap on the stock cylinder here. Open these guys up. The old rings were horrible. <laughs> the ring gaps were huge so hopefully these are a little bit smaller should be brand new all right we'll start with the top ring get that in there You can see the ring gap right in there. Quick measure that just to make sure it's within spec. Just by looking at it, I can tell 
it's going to be fine, but we can measure it and see. I'd like it to be close to 16 thousandths of an inch. Might be 17. Yep, 17. So 17 thou, that's what the first ring gap is. That is fine. A little on the bigger side, but it's still okay. Here's the second ring. You can tell because it's the black, thicker one. This one's a little bit smaller, it looks like, for ring gap, which is good. Possibly. I think this one's going to be a little bit smaller, probably like 15 thou on this one. Yep, 15 thou. So that's a little bit smaller than the other ring, which is good. Alright, that is good. So rings are good to go. We're going to get these installed on the new piston. And then we'll hone out the cylinder here. All right, we're going to try to hone out this uh, cylinder here using the ball hone for 250cc. This one might be a little small now that I'm looking at it. Let's see. That's good. Might get my other home out. Let's see if this one works here. Couple more passes it needs, it looks like. There's an upper ridge right here. It's a little tricky to get off. We might have to use the other cylinder. We'll see if I can get that off or not. All right, so I really don't like the lip right here on it. Kind of see. I think that's from where the piston sat. Um, I don't really want to take much more material off. So we're just going to use this one right here. So this one, the only difference between this one and the cylinder right there is this one says 246 centimeters cubed. And this one right here says, where is it? 281. But really, they're the same bore. They're the exact same cylinder. You can see um, everything's the exact same on it, except for that marking right here. So this one's actually off of a 250X, but they're the exact same thing. You can see exactly the same level. Everything's the exact same. So we're going to uh, hone this one out and then use that one instead. I feel better about that. All right, just uh, hone this one out. This one looks a lot better, you can see. No imperfections on this one. So we'll measure the ring gap again on this one and see if they're in spec. All right, we're gonna try to weld a nut onto the the bolt that broke off right here and the one right here, see if we can get those out. Um, those are really, really stuck on, so we, we will see here.
just slipping off. All right, so I tried welding that nut on a couple different times. Tried a different nut, nothing was working. I think that thing's welded in there. So we're just going to leave it and uh, not mess with it anymore because it was running fine just like that before. So whatever, it's there to stay. Not the end of the world here. So the in on the piston goes towards the intake side. Alright, let's get the cylinder on. All right, cylinders on. I spun it over a couple times and it's super smooth. So we are all set to go with the cylinder. Um, let's start working on the head. All right, as you can see, head looks really good. There's like zero carbon on the valves. I'm guessing the valve seals are fine, but um, I'm gonna replace them anyway. I don't really want to, <laughs> but uh, I, I guess while we're in here, we may as well, so. We've got the uh, valve compressor out right here. Let's start with the intake and just kind of go through them. May as well, right? While we have it off. And the valves are a lot easier to do than the Yamaha ones. Like, way easier. Yeah, these weren't stuck at all. Those came right out like nothing. This valve over here. Hmm. It's actually a little tough to get out. I don't know if that's slightly bent or what. All right, we got this valve out. And it's a little bit bent. So that's not good. And look how worn it is too. 
You can see the lip right there. It's really worn out. So that's no good. Let's get the rest of them out and uh, see how bad they are. Alright, we got the other valves out. Here's the other intake. Let's see what that one looks like here. That into it. That one's worn too. You can see the lip on it right there. So that one's a little bit bent as well. Definitely gonna order up two intakes so far. Let's see the exhaust. That one's straight. Exhaust is good. And there's no wear. You can see there's no lip or anything. So exhaust is good. So one exhaust is good. Let's see the other one. Perfect. And no lip on that one either. So intake are kind of rough. Exhaust valves are good. So we're gonna have to order those up. All right, so we got a different head for it. Valves are all good to go. So let's install that next. All right, we got the head on. Let's torque these bolts down, um, both the Allens right here, and then the hex heads are both 29 foot pounds. All right, set this thing to top dead center on the other side with a T. Uh, this thing's really easy to time. There's just a line going straight up right there. And then on the other side, there's two lines going parallel with the head, the surface of the head. So you can see from back here, line right there and one right there, parallel with the surface of the head right there. So that's pretty easy. We're going to get the valve cover on next. I'm going to lay down some gasket maker right here and then slap that on. All right, we're gonna let that set up and dry for a little bit, the valve cover, and then we'll come back in a couple hours and uh, do the first start attempt. All right, so instead of a couple hours later, it's been a couple days later, um, haven't had a chance to work on this thing, but uh, we got this thing all back together. We got the gas tank on, we've got gas going to the carburetor. Everything is hooked up, pipe is hooked up. So let's attempt to start this thing up for the first time. Valves are in spec. I did the intake uh, .005 and then the exhaust 0 0.004 inches. So um, those are perfect. I spun over the engine by hand just to make sure everything was smooth, everything was good to go. So without further ado, let's see if she still smokes.
Alright, she's slowly starting to stop smoking. I think it's just burning off all the old stuff here. not smoking. It'll probably puff out a little bit. There's still oil in the pipe, but yeah, that sounds pretty good. No top end noise at all. Man, it's running great so far. No smoke. Looking good. Alright, I'm pretty happy with that. I think it's quiet. Really, really quiet. Doesn't get much better than that. Man. Not bad. Not bad at all. Alright, so we'll let this uh, run for a little bit, turn it off and then run it again so that those rings can see it. Um, but then we'll get all the plastics back on it, all that fun stuff. Then go take it for a ride. All right, we've got the front plastics on. we got a headlight in there now. And then we got the key fab uh, plastic right here mounted up with the ignition. So it looks like the front end is all done. Unfortunately, the, uh, the plastics were cut right there. The fenders were cut off. But otherwise, the plastics are in pretty decent condition. You can see, not too bad. But I want to recover the seat. We got a new seat cover for it. The one on it is pretty crappy. Let's take this off right now. One of those, like, just, I don't know, you just cover it over the old seat one. So you can see underneath, it's the original, original cover. But uh, for this one, you gotta take off the seat. Oh, it looks like it's missing the latch and the spring. So we'll have to find a different one of those as well. Alright, we got all the bolts off. It should just pop right off now. Yeah. Alright, now we have to go through, take out all the staples around the seat, right here, and then get that old seat cover off, and then we've got the new one to install. Alright, so the tedious part is done, all the staples are out. Let's see what this looks like now. Alright, so that's not too bad. Alright, so here's the brand I got, Freedom County ATV Black Replacement Seat Cover. We'll see if it fits. This one was just a cheap one on Amazon. It had the fastest shipping, so that's what I went with. Hopefully it's decent quality. It doesn't have to be like crazy perfect or anything, as long as it fits. That's the main thing. It doesn't really look like it's going to, to be honest. <laughs> We'll see here. Yeah, it kind of looks like a... I don't think this is the right one. This looks really tiny. This looks really, really small. I can't imagine that that's going to fit. And it's circular. Yeah, that's... I don't think that's going to fit. Oh, that's a bummer. What the heck? T-Rex. Yeah, it says a T-Rex 300. Uh, 88 through... Oh, oh. 
<laughs> well, doesn't look like that's going to fit. Not even close. What the heck? Well, that one does not fit. <laughs> You know what we're gonna do? We're going to take the seat off my other one and put it on there. That's what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna send the seat cover back. That's ridiculous. Not even close to fitting. Piece of junk. All right, well that looks better. Um, obviously the seat doesn't look perfect, but um, what can you do? We uh, didn't have the right cover, so I took the seat off the other one and um, that's what that looks like. It's a it's a moose racing cover, so that looks, I mean, it's, it's decent. But that's the finished product. Start taking out the stickers. All right, stickers are all off. I'm gonna take some brake cleaner, clean off that ridge right there. And then we're gonna take the heat gun and try to um, get these plastics back to the red color. Because right here is what that's supposed to look like. And it's faded to like pink. And you can see up here too, the difference in color. That's what it's supposed to look like. That's what it's faded to. So let's see if we can take the heat gun or torch and just heat that up. See if, see if it brings back that color. All right, let's see what happens here. I don't want to burn it here. Coming back. We're gonna go through and do the whole thing, I guess. All right, check that out. All done, polished up. Looking pretty good. I could not get the top of the headlight for some reason, but, and then this thing right here didn't turn back. Right there. Everything else did. So that must be a different kind of plastic or something. But yeah, these turned out great back here, so. I'll definitely be doing that again in the future if I've got pink plastics, so. Looking pretty good. All right, made her out here. I didn't uh, pressure wash it because it's basically snowing slash raining, so. This thing unloaded and uh, take her for a little rip.
there for a little bit, but it uh, stopped. Must just be burning off the excess. All right, here we go. First ride on the 300EX. My first ride on the 300EX ever. So let's see how we like it. Let her warm up for a little bit here. Man, it starts right up. That light's really bright too. It's nice. Does reverse work here? I don't think reverse is working. I think you're supposed to pull up on it, right? It's not clicking. I don't know. It's not doing much of anything. Yeah, it's not clicking up into place or anything. I don't know what's going on with that. No smoke. The back brake stopped working just now. Huh. It was working before. See how we like her. <laughs> it's tiny. We did the first break-in ride already, so we're just taking her for the second break-in. Going a little bit faster than before. It sucks not having uh, front fenders, though. It's just getting all in my face here. right there. Front brake is good. Let's take her on the road. I think she's broken in now. <laughs> Woohoo! wet right there. Holy. Couldn't see anything. Get back up on the road here. Alright, we'll let that cool down for a bit. Oh man. Is it cold? It snowed again. Last night. Can't believe it's snowing again. Should be warm out right now. What is this lever for right here? That looks like some sort of lever. Ah, ah, figured it out. All right, so that's how reverse works. Let's see. All right, we'll go forward. Try reverse here. So this is what you do. You put it in neutral, push that button in right there, pull up, reverse lights on. Alright. Alright, reverse is working. Sweet. Click it back down. Oop, stalled it. Uh, 
All right, we got her working. That's good. Just get done with the first ride. Big success. Doesn't smoke anymore. Runs good. Has good power. Looks really nice. Reverse works. Lights work. Uh, front brake works. Back brake works. But needs to be bled. So I think that was uh, uh, definitely a success. So that wraps up this one on the 300EX. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next one. Until next time.